Hi everyone, it's Olivia Sor here. I am a special project coordinator at Chequeado in Argentina. And among the special projects is LATAM Chequea, our Latin American network of fact checkers. Thank you very much for joining us today at this time in, in this panel. We want to, to share a bit with you about what we've been doing in Latin America with fact checking, specifically during the COVID crisis. Um, I will be joined by Tania Montalvo from Animal Politico in Mexico, Fabiola Torres from Salud con Lupa in Peru, Juan Hayborn uh, from El Surti in Paraguay. They are all fact checkers, among other things. And besides being in different countries, they have all very different approaches to fact checking or different ways of sh working on it and showing it. And so we thought it would be interesting to share with you about how we've been doing this alliance and how we've been working from different perspectives on fact checking and how we think that has strengthened the abilities of all the organizations to have faster work, faster fact checking and a better reach also, which are two of our main objectives with LATAM Chequea and specifically with this coronavirus project. So just to just start with a very short introduction about LATAM Chequea and what it is that we do. So if you could put up my presentation, I can start by telling you a bit about this project. Um, on my first slide, the one that comes after this, uh, is a little picture of the first gathering we did. So well, there we are. In 2014, we had our first event where we met and we started this from Chequeado with the idea of getting together different fact checkers that were already working on this in the region, but also with other journalists um, that were interested and other, and other organizations, not just journalists, that were interested in data-driven journalism and in data-driven communication so that we could um, share experiences, learn from what others were doing right and wrong, and also to incentivize the growth of fact-checking in Latin America because we thought it was a region that needed more fact-checking badly. And so we were very happy from that first meeting in 2014 to see that the community grew and that there was, as you probably see all around the world, it has been much more interested in fact checking in the last few years and the community has grown a lot. And so in the next slide, you can see how the group grew. And that was our 2018 meeting where there was many more of us. We should have had our next one this year, but things happened, so we're not getting together. In the next slide, you can see a little map and it's not completely updated. We have, we have a few organizations missing there. But you can see that now we're covering most of the continent. Uh, so we have lots of organizations that we're working with around Latin America that are doing great fact checking work. And so getting into LATAM coronavirus, and that's my next slide, we are now 35 organizations from 19 countries. We started this collaboration in March. We were probably lucky, well, we were lucky in Latin America that the crisis got here a bit later after going through Asia and Europe. So we have a bit, and we had a bit more time to prepare for it. And we started this collaboration because we had already built a network of organizations where we knew each other, we trusted each other, and we could work together. And we could integrate new players that came in with this. Um, we could build on that work and very quickly launch Latam Chequea Coronavirus. And we started with some funds that we had uh, for traveling that of course didn't happen. And so we reallocated those funds to be able to coordinate and support organizations. And then we had Google um, support and that allowed us even more to be able to coordinate this alliance and to support the organizations that participate in it. And we think being in a region that is not necessarily considered central for the rest of the world, the fact that there is many of us makes it much more easy to get our voices heard and also to get financing. So I think that's one of the, of the key points uh, of this organization. Not only it allowed us to do our work better in each organization, I think, but it also allowed us as, as an alliance to have a stronger presence and to be able to finance our work in a better way. 
And so I just wanted to very quickly share some lessons we've had from this organized from this work. And one is that pooling resources takes you a long way. Uh, because it's a lot of us, we can rely on others to produce content. And as we know, and as you're probably seeing in other parts of the world, the disinformation and misinformation that circulates around coronavirus is quite similar in different countries. And a lot of the time what we're seeing is that it first circulates in Mexico and then it gets to Colombia and then it goes to Brazil and then it comes to Argentina or the other way around. And the fact that we already have a fact check done in Mexico with good sources and good information and thorough fact checking and, and information that we can trust and use that to very quickly debunk the misinformation that's circulating in Argentina means that we can do our work much quicker and that means that we can arrive when the disinformation is starting to spread and don't have to take that much time fact checking ourselves each point uh, of that misinformation. And also it allowed us to create visual pieces and to generate awareness campaigns that each organization doing it by themselves would, would have probably been much harder and much more complicated and costly. Whereas if we do it all together and then we produce pieces that can be used by everyone, it's much easier. The other lesson in the next slide is uh, to partner with different kinds of organizations. And that's the, the one, three of the partners that we're going to be talking with later among the other 35 partners, uh, I think show a bit that. We, are all, we all have fact-checking. When Chequeado is a fact-checking organization, other organizations have other focus, but also do fact-checking. But I think the combination of not only having, um, having fact-checkers that have different focus, so some are more focused on doing fact-checking very quickly, some do more in-depth reporting um, and can produce pieces that then a lot of us can use to have information to um, contrast misinformation with. And then organizations that have a much more visual presentation, have more strength on social media. And so they, the, we actively looked for different partners so that that could help us develop different areas of our alliance. And the other lesson is, and it's my next slide, is um, to have very clear objectives and rules within the alliance. And that, for one side, clear objectives means who is your public for each product? What do you want him to see? And what are the rules inside the alliance so that everyone can share and use that content in a way that everyone is comfortable with? And who decides certain things and who takes certain actions so that when that's clear, it's much easier to collaborate. And I just wanted to, say, to show you a few examples that in the next slide, you can see our main product or the first product actually, and that's our database of fact checks. And so it's a very simple and not very beautiful, as you might see, uh, database in which all the, we, that we're doing together or coordinated with IFCN. So we share, we take some of the information from IFCN and we put it together with some other information from the region and we produce this. And this is not beautiful, not just because we didn't put design into it, but it's on purpose done so that it's as functional as possible. So it's a very easy spreadsheet and very searchable because we thought this specific product for other fact checkers, journalists, and um, specialists who would be willing to spend a few minutes looking at the database, understanding how it works, and then going into, into kind of a more in-depth look at it. So we don't imagine, this is kind of a back end for fact checkers so that they can come here, look for other fact checks that other organizations has, have done, and then quickly be able to publish their own. We did not think with this that we were going to reach a wider audience or a general public, because we think that the general public, the, the best actor to reach that general public is each fact-checking organization. And so we try to facilitate their work so that they can have the fact check quickly, and then they can see what the best way is to share that with their audiences. So we didn't invest a lot in making this a very beautiful website we were much more focused on making it functional and easy and searchable. And then we did other things that are my next slide uh, to, re to reach wide audiences. On one, you can see one of the illustrations that El Surti is doing, and we did a partnership so that they would produce, because they have a very strong 
visual aspects so that they would produce um, pieces that would be widely shared on social media that would explain in very simple terms kind of the, the most important part of a fact check. And on the right, you have a campaign that we did with an um, agency in which you see a question that said disinformation. And if you take your distance, you can see in the background that it says it's false with the idea that you should take a distance from misinformation. So just these are two of some of, some of the, the very other things that we're doing. We have a WhatsApp group in which we can quickly share information and ask about videos that are circulating and pull resources to fact check a video that's circulating in different countries very quickly. Uh, we're doing lots of other things, but I think our main take is that it's very useful to have an alliance, to have an alliance with diverse members that have different strengths and that we have different products from different, um, from, for different audiences. And so one for the organizations, one for the most, for the wider public, and then we articulate between the different products with very clear objectives. That's a bit of what I wanted to share with you. There are my contact details. If you are a fact checker in Latin America and you're not participating, but you would like to participate, please reach out. And if you're fact checkers in other countries and in other regions that you think you could benefit from this six year experience we've had building Latin Chequea, also please uh, reach out. And having said this, I would like to present our first speaker in the panel, it's Tania Montalvo. She's the deputy editorial director of Animal Politico in Mexico. And they've been doing an amazing work in very, very quick in detecting disinformation that's circulating and debunking it quickly. And so I wanted her to tell us a bit about how that experience has been. Thank you, Olivia. Hi. Uh, how are you? Uh, well, uh, this is like a few recommendations, a few a few uh, uh, recommendations that allow us in Animal Politico to debunk uh, this information very quickly. Uh, I mean, this is our like uh, some advices. Uh, your team shouldn't spend so much time on this. The first thing that uh, I can say is you need to answer basic questions. First, what do we know? Uh, if we are talking about a uh, coronavirus crisis, um, we know, for example, in Mexico, Mexico is a country in which uh, people, it's not uh, very used to go to the hospital to listen to authorities. It's very common to ask first to the grandma to, to trust in your neighbor. So these kind of things are the, the kind of disinformation that will be moving very, very quickly in the country. So you know your country. You should know what kind of disinformation it's very easy to move uh, with, with in the people. I mean, what they are talking about and doing these rumors, it is information that will be very easy to debunk, and at the same time, it's, it it will be very very viral. So. Uh, the first thing is what is moving faster? For example, in Mexico, in Mexico, uh, these uh, home remedies, home remedies, uh, a tea, a soup, in the case of COVID, it's moving very, very fast. And it will repeat in different ways, in different types of disinformation, in video, in images, in text, and it will be very easy to, to debunk if we are prepared. For that, the, the, the first advice is have a reliable information guide. What I mean with this, uh, you should know what is dangerous to health. So if you have a guide with all the advices, for example, from World Health Organization, if you have a guide after uh, doing different interviews with doctors, with a specialist, and you have like a specific points of what is wrong, what is correct, what is the way to inform people, it will be very easy to debunk information in, in, in the moment when you see uh, this video, these images with, with, with false data. So uh, the most important is uh, you have this, what is common, what is common to share in your country, what is people talking about, for example, face mask, uh, what to eat, if there is uh, available to go out, uh, to, to, to running, etc. If you have this reliable information guide that it's 
uh, updated and you update every time you you find up something it will be very easy each time you find something new to jump and uh, debug that information next please uh, here for example with this guide if you have this reliable information guide you, you you'll be able to produce something big so something that helps you every time I mean you need to to choose something that actually it's like very viral and that you can use every time for example this is a video this is a video that lasts more than five minutes and it's not the classical video when you have only text and it's explaining things no there is a host we have gags, we have uh, interviews, we have a very huge production, uh, and we are talking about every every myth, every rumor about cleaning. If you have to clean, for example, with chlorine, if you have to use chlorine with other substances, what happens? Because in Mexico, we receive a lot of this information about what to clean or what not to clean or how to clean the things. So we create only one video that it's a huge, uh, as I said, a huge production that actually went viral very, very easy and not by us. Each time that uh, um, it appears some disinformation about how to clean or how to use chlorine, the, the same people ex uh, um, start to sharing this video and this video just fly, fly along uh, because it was a, a huge production in which we debunk a lot of things and uh, things that are very common and you know this information is moving very fast. Maybe today we are hearing something about chlorine and in two weeks it will be exactly the same but with different words. If it, with this huge production we are debunking a lot of things in social media. Next please. Uh, next advice, have a template. Uh, these are the punks that are very easy and very viral. For example, the first one is talking about tea. Uh, if you are drinking tea, you can protect you from coronavirus. And the second why, the second one is about uh, uh, drinking water and uh, with salt, and also it, it will be help helpful uh, against coronavirus. Both are exactly uh, the same type of uh, disinformation, and if you see these this uh, illustration, it, they, they have almost the same elements, you know? The false word, these little boxes with text, and uh, when any debunking and with this reliable guide that I mentioned before, it's very easy to fill the camps and to put the elements that we already designed. I mean, we have the bird because we are calling Animal Politico, so the bird is our, our pet. We use that, we have a lot of birds already designed and we use that birds all the time. And it's very easy with this full guide just to fill the, the boxes and start moving these slides. Next, please. And next slide, please, sorry. And uh, lastly, I, I, will, I will talk about was have, have a trust network, local, national, and abroad. But, but it's very important to say that you need like a full director of this trust network and you need to know who is available and when is available because sometimes we have like a doctor that we in, in which we can trust and in which we co we can talk with him but uh if we don't know exactly at what time in which moments we can talk with him we are losing uh, the contact with our source. So this trust network, for example, a local, Animal Politico is a national media. So we have a local network with state media. We have uh, contacts with reporters in almost every state in the country. Mexico is a big country. So we can talk with state media in different times in order to, to confirm information. And we are talking with them all the time. Uh, national, of course, we are talking with uh, TV stations, radio stations, uh, in order to have more reach in our debunking and abroad. Well, this is Latam Chequea, IFCN, and uh, because someone, it's very easy that someone already debunked what you are looking for. So before starting to going crazy to how to debunk something, 
it's very important to, to see if your network already debunked that because most of the time they already did. So if someone has reliable information, has something, has material that uh, it works for you, your team didn't have to spend so much time in that verification because someone already did. So it's only the time that you have to spend in adapted to your country, to your language or the words that are very common in your country and try with these materials that I, I mentioned before. Maybe if you have this template for illustration, some the work that some somebody else in other part of the world already did, you can put it in this template and now you are ready to debunk something in your country and start going viral in social media. Whoops. <laughs> there she we thank you very much, Tanya, for that presentation. And I think uh, some of the main points you made are really helpful and useful for us and for other fact-checking organizations, produce content that can be used for different uh, debunking and from different fact-checks, have templates to be able to share that on, on social media and on different networks, and build networks, let them check as one of them, but also inside uh, each country and uh, within different kind of um, specialists and other organizations that can help and make the fact-checking process much faster. And talking about that, I would like to introduce Fabiola Torres, for, which is the director and the founder of Salud con Lupa. Uh, they're based in Peru, but they're a regional organization, and they have been doing an amazing work in in-depth um, reporting on health issues that has helped us a lot uh, in, in Latam Chequea to have more detailed information and to be able to follow um, with evidence the, the updates on medical information that comes out. So all yours, Fabiola, thank you. Thank you. Um, I will introduce to you Salud con Lupa because it's a new website. Uh, we have just uh, 11 months online. Uh, first, my first slide, please. Um, Salud con Lupa is a digital platform uh, focused on public health in Latin America. Um, since we launched the platform, we focus on these kind of issues because infodemic uh, uh, was a problem before the COVID pandemic. The next, please. The next slide. Okay, yeah. Uh, we create a section called Compreva, verify in English. Uh, and we have a process to uh, work on it. Since the beginning, we work in collaboration with scientists uh, because now uh, we, we say every day in my team and also we want to share it with our users, our audience that will science work on to find a cure for the coronavirus. The rest of us can learn how to keep ourselves well informed a habit we need to continue forming every day. And that's why we uh, prepare or we work in two kinds of uh, articles or uh, stories in our Compreva section. The next slide, please. Um, we work with Epistemonicos Foundation, that is an um, uh, organization, a Chilean organization that uh, have a big database of many papers review uh, based uh, in medicine. Uh, um, with this collaboration, the content we create for Verify uh, can be broken down in two categories, explainers and fact checkers. And um, fact checks. Fact checks uh, are in, in a structure, in a way we say, false or true. But in these times, with the coronavirus crisis, many people are is looking for uh, answers. Uh, this is a way, uh, this is the opportunity to explain people and to uh, uh, learn how to inform, how to identify reliable sources. And that's why explainers are the most important uh, pieces or stories we do because we try to uh, give the context and also explain why we don't have now 
certain uh, answers for everything they they are looking for coronavirus and it's very difficult because as i say like the mantra in my team it's a habit a habit how to uh, take decisions which kind of information you take to uh, inform in health um, it's not easy to say people you are not uh, right but we think that a process in explainers is uh, like uh, a great experience because journalists and, uh, and users are, uh, and audience are learning how to inform in this time. The next, please. I will not, don't panic, I will not explain like at a like a workshop this, but this is very important, very, very important for the work we, we do now. Because, as you know, um, many journalists are looking for reliable sources. But in science and also in this kind of uh, fact-checking notes, we need to know the, the quality of the evidence. And expert opinions are not the best. We need to uh, work with uh, papers that are meta-analysis, that someone else, a group of scientists, review what I what are um, what is correct or what is not correct or or they have questions or not do you remember that hydroxychloroquine uh, scandal okay that's why we have uh, not uh, papers with without quality or with low evidence in this case uh, the next please to learn with our team with our fact checkers and with all the team of Salud con Lupa, we have um, a project, a project that uh, is working in collaboration with scientific uh, organizations. And the first scientific organization, as I mentioned, is uh, Epistemonica Foundation. That's why this year Pointer uh, selected us as one of the winners of the Fact Checking Innovation Challenge and Lupa Collectiva or Collective Amplifying Glasses uh, is, is the way uh, and the methodology to explain, to work together and to explain people how important it is to produce and to know uh, news about health issues or public health um, in, and with reliable sources. And of course, in this methodology, we want to uh, include the contributions of citizens because, you know, in the last months, many people uh, open blogs, open uh, Twitter accounts to uh, not only uh, share opinions, just to share information. And this kind of uh, collaboration or contributions are uh, a way uh, to create a community, citizens, scientists, and journalists working together. The next, please. And that's why we are working on a platform. It's a microsite uh, in Saluco Lupa, Lupa Collectiva project, to organize this. And uh, everybody uh, will know what we are checking, what we are verifying. And uh, you can contribute. And uh, now we have a a pilot. Uh, I will explain in another uh, panel each uh, topic or each uh, process. Uh, but this is something that is very important and this is something that we want to share because now journalists have to combine the strength of journalism and science. Uh, this is this time a uh, coronavirus crisis uh, permit us to learn that we can't uh, not work uh, uh, alone. Um, we try to uh, identify how to do it. Um, we want to get recon get recognition or give record recognition recognition people that contribute to check our topics. That's why Lupa Colectiva has a process. Uh, the next, please. Uh, last last week uh, we were. Uh, covering some topics uh, and this is the, the way we present the information that, that, that we check or explain. No? 
what happened when this is in Spanish, but what happened when you uh, are looking for fast uh, questions or answers to the science? Why? Because we have 10 thousands of uh, papers in this pyramid, pyramid that I showed before you, before uh, um, not everything is uh, a reliable source. And this is a process that journalists and fact checkers need, need to be trained to uh, select better the, the sources. The next, please. Uh, uh, in the way which we, we can explain the complex topics, for example, how uh, at the beginning, when we know uh, just a little about how coronavirus uh, impact in our body, uh, we know uh, that yes, lungs were, were affected. But now we have information that it's more about it. It's not just like a flu. And we try to combine also the good explainers with the graphics. Uh, and we do graphic specials. Uh, our explainers combine these kind of products because many of the people need to um, uh, see some things that are like very, very complex in a way they, they understand and also imagine what's happening and have like uh, a good uh, presentation to attract people uh, in this way. Uh, and this, this kind of uh, pieces are very um, attractive and have many visitors because uh, it's easy to follow in this kind of uh, presentation or formats the, the information. The next. Well, if you don't know about Salud con Lupa, help with amplifying glasses in English, uh, I invite you to know our work. We are in three uh, platforms and of course visit our website. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabiola, for that presentation. And I think it stressed uh, a very important point that, that Tanya also made before about working with other professionals networks with other uh, networks of people that can help us as sources for our fact checks that I think it's also been it's it's proven to be quite essential during this coronavirus crisis uh, please leave questions uh, in the um, feed so that we can have questions from you for when we finish with this presentation and with that I will give the stage to Juan Hayborn he is the co-founder and visual editor at El Surti and they have been doing an amazing work to translate very complicated and sometimes quite dry subjects into beautiful illustrations that help have much more reach on social media so he's going to tell us a, a bit about that hi it's a pleasure well i um Thank you very much, Olivia. And I will start to answer the question, why do we illustrate fact checks? Can we see the first slide, please? Well, we see for an emotional response with illustration. We, with, we believe that illustration allows us to, to a first contact with, a, with an information on the audience that uh, can tear down barriers and prejudices and it allows to first contact with much more sensitivity with some audience. Can we see the examples, please? We, <coughs> we believe that the beauty, the next one, we believe that beauty is a very important tool to tear down, uh, uh, tear down barriers and prejudices in, in the audience. We, I can have some examples in the next three slides, please, so you can see it. Um, this is for an article about isolation in, in Latin America. Uh, the next one is um, just why do we need to, to vaccinate? So we, we search a lot so how can we represent sensibly and respectfully the, the whole process of, of the checking. And the next one is how, how do we use masks, useful information and can prevent illness. <laughs> The, the next reason is 
that compressing the verification is in only one image may make it much more easy to spread it. It's, it's in regions like Latin America when internet connectivity is very expensive and very low. Um, most people use apps like WhatsApp and Facebook because they are free basics. So we must make pieces to reach them there easily. Besides that, uh, the next slide, please. This is an example of how do you see a, a, a report as standard reporting, but it compressed in, in just one JPEG in, in a cell phone. Besides that, the next, uh, we have to adapt and to reach. There are so many social media, there's so many formats, they change every few months. So in the next slide, we will see how we adapt the narratives to, to many, many pieces in the letter. We have one compressed reporting, and after we have a lot of pieces that are made to, to, and designed to adapt the narr narrative and uh, to, to different formats in, in different social media. The next one. Uh, so how do how do we make the team like that to do this? Um, we have many experiences assembling teams in for different projects, visual projects, and we in the next slide uh, the team and flow we have we have to be very dynamic. We are learning a lot from this experience, and we have to. Uh, we are making very improvements in our, in, our, in our workflow. If you see the next slide, you see this. Uh, I hope you're seeing dark. Huh. Uh, well, we have three teams in addition, design and fact checking, and all the three teams can have the same information about the schedules, the, the checking, the sources, etc. So we can um, interact. Uh, with different different people with different skills interact and we've learned that they acquire different skills and they acquire autonomy in in the time uh, i'd like to mention two two principles we follow first is simple wording for complex issues uh it's a founding trade of journalism and it's a founding trade of, of education and it's our our it's our best principle and the, the other principle is collective sketching. We design with reporters and, and the verification team work with the illustration team so they can improve their knowledge and they, and they both manage the same information. Um, but we have some challenges. The next slide, please. This sort of representation has its challenges. In the next slide, we need to avoid representing sync people or using sensationalist pa colors uh, in times of anxiety, tension, and uncertainty. Our goal is to, speak, to transmit serenity and, and calm. The next slide, please. We are a very diverse region, and we must represent that in colors, shapes, clothes, habits, etc. The next slide, please. Uh, we shall not treat as fools the people who believe in fake news. We must respect them. We've all been there. And we must illustrate them serene and not caricaturate them, never. And the last one, uh, please, we should not attack or make fun on, on falsehood. We show a logical reasoning that enables gradually learning to avoid falseness and to say goodbye, I just say that from the learning from this, we have the idea to to put together a, a Latin American network of illustrators and visual journalists. And I hope you will have some news soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation, Juan. And great news to know that there will be a Latin American network of illustrations. Um, we. I think it was it's very interesting to hear you, especially for some of us that don't come from the most illustrative the illustration world and have not thought through design so much. So, so to hear your guidelines about 
how not to represent sick people, how to be balanced in the way you do the, the illustrations, and also how to be empathetic with the communication and so show what the, what the information is without mocking and without making fun of others, I think are some of the, the key points <clears throat> and, are, and are very interesting. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So I would like if now we can we can go to some questions from the public. I have a few, but we have already received some. So I will open with uh, one that's complicated, and I would like to as a moderator here and let you answer this. So why do you think COVID-19 hoaxes that had been debunked in Europe and Asia before became big in Latin America anyway so many weeks later? So why things that have already been fact-checked in Asia and Europe still were shared here and transmitted and grew. I don't know if anyone wants to take the question. Well, um, if I can say something, I think that uh, the main answer is that are completely different audiences. And we know that the fact check, the verification of our work, it's not necessarily moving as the same as, as faster as the disinformation is so uh, sometimes probably we are debunking something in one country or in another part of the world but uh, that doesn't affect at all uh, the, that that disinformation in other parts of the world so uh, the audience I think are completely different I don't know if the, the exactly um what what kind of people is sharing this information in each country but i think even in in any in each country in latin america it's different i mean sometimes for example uh, the youtube videos in mexico are share, are shared a lot by young people and the audio disinformation is is shared more uh, but by by old people so if if that that kind of uh that characteristic change in another country that it's an obstacle uh, to to move the debunk uh if if we already did it in mexico so i think that we need it that's important also to talk about uh, illustration explainers the banking uh features because uh, the audience are completely different and the audience that are consuming these in Latin America uh, in each country are completely different different ages different kind of people the, 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 the way that they are consuming information it's different so that's also important to have these all formats that this huge video on YouTube, for example, more than five or even eight minutes debunking this information, because some people are watching this and they are not reading and they are not uh, looking for illustration. They need to be in the computer and watching for a long time, a huge explanation, another didn't. So I think that uh, we need to think in different audience all the time. And that's why something probably in Europe that everything, everyone in Europe already know that it's false. In Latin America, it's moving very fast as this information. I also would like to share two ideas because uh, I agree with Tanya, but this is the first pandemic we are covering in real time. And we have a lot of information uh, to select. And it's more difficult because as you know, since the first months to the six months of the coronavirus, uh, everything was um, changing and the science have new answers uh, next, next, and ne next month. And we have to be prepared to explain it because uh, in January, we didn't know something now that we know now and we have certain topics to explain or to communicate and transform in news. And um, this is something very, very different, different in, in the context in all the world, because maybe the next month we will have new answers from scientific or medicine, and we will have to change the way we, have, we were communicating something. This is the challenge for journalists, I think, that aren't understanding. I, I, I can't pronounce, pronounce the, the uh, word, but we are entertaining. <laughs> with this 
And I think this is this is a challenge. Yes. Um, and I'm, Juan, did you want to say something about this or? No, no, let's go to the next one. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, and I think uh, what you both said uh, underlines the, the importance of having <clears throat> local fact checkers who can talk to their local audiences because this information travels to different countries, but the fact checks don't necessarily travel the same way. So probably people who follow a fact checker in Mexico do not necessarily follow fact checks from Peru. And so we need to repeat them in each country and in different formats for different audiences. Um, another question that came through the audience, it's from Dulce Ramos. She says, what were the Alliance's KPIs and how the Alliance is measuring success in a way that is compelling, informative and meaningful for all the 35 organizations to actually conclude that misinformation or its impact is being reduced? And I can, I can give an answer afterwards as, as coordinator of the Alliance. But um, I would like you all to, to just say if, if, how do you think the Alliance can be measured as successful in fighting against misinformation or how your work can be measured and how the Alliance has helped towards that work? I think that uh, first we can talk about um, the the the, the bonds that that we that we made together um sometimes uh we are not talking a lot about that but uh i mean we in animal politico in mexico we have a lot that uh a lot of the bonds that are doing very quickly because we have the information made by the network so probably if if we alone our our fact checkers uh we're doing that alone I don't know, maybe we invest like a whole day, uh, an hour, a few hours and uh, talking in a network, we can do uh, something, a material in our own works in the Mexican way, but using the research, the information from Colombia, from Brazil, from Peru, from Argentina, etc. So that uh, can be done in only an hour, maybe in a, a few WhatsApp, maybe in a couple of mails and do it very, very quickly. And also we can share each other, for example, what works. Uh, maybe we are thinking in Mexico to doing a whole piece about something and we can talk each other and say this is not working you need to do it in video you need a, a good illustration because a whole piece would be not read so we we are like sharing this knowledge and we are learning each other and I think that also that the network is already bigger it's also part of the knowledge that, that we are acquiring, like how to share, how to be more, uh, because it's each time it, it will be harder to work together if we are more, but we are learning and we are sharing. I think that that's a very way to, 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 to talk about how this is working. I'd, I'd like to yeah. say something um, only with, well, we are, many of these organizations are very small organizations or very small media and sharing is an, uh, it's a way of living. Um, sharing with international media, it's a way to gain respect in some sometimes very aggressive environment of news in, in each country. So if you got the, the backup of a, a Latam Chequea or international or an international uh, news associations, you have many, you have, you feel confident, you you communicate different with your audience, and you have more, more methodological, methodology, oh, methodic skills for working in, in in group. Yeah, I just want to add something that is very important. That is like the backstage of our work as fact checkers and journalists. That is sometimes. Um, I have a lot of notifications, and it's very useful to know what is what is the the fact check of the week because we have a lot of uh, information of the alliance. Um, sometimes we have to fight with the scientific uh, misrepresented scientific data because not all journalists are prepared to uh, have a good interpretation of the information. That's why sometimes some explainers 
uh, need to be prepared in a, another way. But, but this is an, uh, an aspect that we are learning now because um, in the past we didn't have, like I said, uh, a context in crisis that we need to do uh, people answers and we don't have these answers right now from anybody and that's uh, important to say people this is what we know until now uh, something like this and this is like the backstage when we say well okay people is talking about it but we don't have all the answers but we have this and this is a good practice that i see in all the fact checking notes that we we share in the alliance Thank you. Yes, and I will just add, as coordinator of the of the alliance, that the way that we are uh, looking at this alliance and the objectives we had and what what we would like to evaluate or what we will be evaluating afterwards is two basic objectives. One is that we allow organisations to produce more fact checks or to produce more in depth fact checks, that they can produce content faster, that they and we as Chicago too. Uh, that we can produce content faster and that means more content and come quick and can respond quickly to misinformation. And the other thing is to have a wider reach and that has to do with El Surti's illustrations and also with a lot of the, the content that Salud con Lupa is doing and others, um, which is to be able to use different formats, which is something that not all, not all of factory organizations can do. I mean, Animal Politico has templates and has a very quick way of, of changing piece, text pieces into illustrations and sharing them on social media. Uh, not all organizations can do that that quickly. And also, since we do have the same, some of the same misinformation circulating around the continent, we can centralize that, make beautiful illustrations, and then share them and have a wider reach. So our two key objectives with this project are to be able to produce more and faster and have a wider reach uh, with the content we produce. There's another question that comes uh, that says, beyond our local alliances and doing it on our language, should we find compatibilities in the methodology we use? And I would I would add to that if there's kind of if we're moving forward with Latam Chikea, is there things in the methodology or in other areas that you would see as being able that we could share more or build on for future collaborations, imagining this pandemic will eventually be over. Um, Whoever wants to go ahead. <laughs> okay, I, I think I, that uh, go go for your last word. <laughs> yes, I wanted to say that we are building a methodology to do a specialized fact-checking process because in some media we have uh, categorized categories uh, to identify some information, for example, in the political uh, context. But uh, in this case, uh, in my position, in in my personal experience, I think that for a um, Health, health issues or some topics that are uh, scientific, we, we don't have the, the same uh, formula no? uh, to, to fight. We need to uh, do some work in collaboration to, to illustrate, to have more um, um, tools to create a methodology that works for this. Because we know that this is not just when we say Finally, we have the answer for the coronavirus and we have that vaccine. No, in the future, we know that we will fight. We continue fighting with this kind of information. And that's why we need to build a methodology that works for us. Now, uh, many of them have a lot of experience because I know some of my partners. I know Tania and her many years and Chequeado founded the network in Argentina and Latin America. But now we are in a new phase. In, a, in this new phase, need new ways also to work in some some kind of uh, context and topics and specialized information. 
Uh, I'd like to add that besides fact-checking method in, in, in this crisis become a, with a very high importance to work in a distance with other groups of, of different countries and all realities. And, and we also work hard on, on that, that creating alliances with so many people that, that we can, whether we can. So I think the, the methodology is uh, not only for fact check, it's for uh, group work, uh, integrating skills, for learning how to illustrate, or learning how to reach more people, etc. Uh, I would say that I think that every alliance, every network, what uh, should do in the future, and we probably need to think about it, it's uh, how to work together in prevent disinformation. And it's also related with the first question. I mean, if we know that there is something moving as disinformation and it's very viral and very powerful maybe in another country, how, uh, what as an alliance, as a network, we should do in order to prevent that that disinformation arrives to uh, other countries with the same power, with the same virality? You know, uh, I think that every alliance move uh, needs to move forward to, to that to that point because yes, I mean we are we are working together. Uh, and we are, I think, we are having results. But if probably we we are this this crisis, this coronavirus crisis, um, is teaching us that we need to move uh, away. I mean, to, to move very quickly or more quickly in that way. I mean, if I saw something in Mexico that it's moving very quickly and that it's affecting the health of the people, uh, how we as a, as, as, an, as, as, a, as a network, we should act in order to prevent that this information to have effects in Argentina, in Colombia, in Brazil, in Peru, etc. I think that we are not there in, in, in this point, like uh, uh, attacking that disinformation to, to move to other countries. And I don't know if there is a way to do it because, I mean, I know that if, if I, for example, if I in Mexico publish something that it's moving as, as uh, very viral in Argentina, probably it, the, the, the result in Mexico will be to amplify uh, something that in Mexico doesn't exist, of course. But uh, how to prevent that uh, before it appears in Mexico? If we know that it's moving very quickly and ha it's having a lot of effects in Argentina, I think that that could be one of the uh, of the future of this alliance and any other alliance from checking. Thank you very much for that. We only have two minutes left, but I think um, the ideas you three said uh, about the future are very interesting. And this idea about maybe creating an, a way of warning each other when something is getting very big in our country, just in case it does arrive in another country. And uh, someone would ask, was asking in the questions also what the difference is between this alliance and other work we've done together. Like when there was a big Guaidos crisis in, in Venezuela, we also did work together. We've also done work on sexual education misinformation that circulates around Latin America. And I think, um, I hope nothing is as big as this in the future, at least soon. But I do imagine <laughs> that there will be other subjects um, that do cross over in different formats and with slightly different ways in different Latin American countries, but that we can warn each other and see how, and, and, and I think we have a, a way to, we, we need to work on understanding better how that misinformation goes from one country to the next, so that we can try at least warning each other and preventing each other and preventing it from growing in other countries. Um, so yes, I think we have a lot of work to do on thinking how we can articulate this in the future, what subjects are more transnational and less local, and what methodology we can share. And also, I think there's a lot to learn on what country, how political context affect our fact checking, and what we see in one country, and how politician and public uh, 
opinion leaders say in one country and act in one country then gets replicated with the same methods in another and i think there's also a lot to learn from how that how that moves from from country to country i think i've talked my last few minutes out of this <laughs> but if you have any comments or anything else you, you would like to share before we before we close up uh, i just to like say... to sorry no, just to say thank you and the next challenge is how to engage more people in the this battle of misinformation to fight to misinformation and empathetic it's very important you mentioned it uh, olivia um when we write something uh trying to explain people something that you want that these people understand you need to be very empathetic and engage it and this is very difficult now for 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 everybody not just for not journalists but thank you for this opportunity to share with with this group thank you thank you very much and i, I agree with you uh, we have many challenges in the future and and we hope we keep working stronger and together uh, i don't have anything to add thank you so much for this opportunity <laughs> and let's keep working we hope the next challenges are a bit a bit smaller than coronavirus in the future but we will keep uh, thinking about how to keep this alliance working together. We have been working for the next for the last six years together. We think there are many more challenges that will be coming. We will probably have to adjust and adapt to new circumstances. But we're very we're very happy for and and we think it has been very useful for the last three months to work as an alliance and to work together and hope to keep doing much more work. And again, if any of this is uh, useful for any of you, please reach out. We're happy to share the experiences that we've had here in Latin America that can be useful for other regions. Thank you very much for joining this panel.